as always, it is an honor and a privilege to stand before you and to lead us into the praise and worship moment of the worship experience here at the New Calvary Baptist Church. We welcome all of you that are on Facebook Live. We welcome to you all of our friends who are on the phone line. And what we want to do in this moment is just to encourage your heart, your mind, and your spirit. This is your favorite executive pastor, Pastor B. And I just wanted to be reminded and lift you up some scripture that fell into my heart and into my spirit as we prepare to worship God today in spirit and in truth. The song the songwriter David says in the 122nd Psalm, it's very familiar to, to you, we say it here at New Calvary all the time, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. This is another one that I like. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Here is one that Pastor Small loves. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in the sea. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how you've been quarantined. It doesn't matter how you've been isolated. Because the reality of the matter is God is still mindful. God is still concerned. God is still thinking about us. And because we serve a God in spirit and in truth, we can still rejoice and be excited about what God is doing in our lives on today. And so, brothers and sisters, I ask that you pray with me in this moment as we pray our prayer of invocation. All wise and eternal creator, Abba, Father. thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning and thanking you for allowing us to reach out in this platform, oh God. And God, we ask that you meet us at our most private need, because you knew what we needed before we even asked and we ask, oh God, that you have your way in this worship experience, that we will be able to see who we are in you more clearly, that when we get off the line, we'll walk different, we'll talk different, we'll act different, we'll engage different, because we serve a God that is able to do anything but fail. And so God, just say that we want you to have your way in our hearts, in our minds, and in our spirits. We'll be forever mindful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. For it is in the marvelous, the magnificent, the miracle working, magnanimous name of Jesus Christ, our healer, Jesus Christ, our redeemer, Jesus Christ, our liberator, that we do pray. All of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen. Hey, man, how grateful we are to worship in this moment and just to share with you all that as we come together to lift up the name of Jesus, we do realize and acknowledge that God continues to watch over us and God continues to provide even in this season. And so with all that's going on, we are indeed grateful to worship the Lord on today, grateful to give God praise, honor, and glory, grateful to declare that God is still able and that God is still working things out. So we thank you for sharing with us this morning. We're blessed by your presence. We are uh, continuing to worship virtually. Want to let you know that although um, some restrictions have been eased, we believe the leadership here at New Calvary Baptist Church believes that it is responsible uh, to be wise and to uh, use discretion in this season. And so we're not looking to rush back right away, uh, but we're looking to find ways to phase and we'll be talking and discussing that. But we'll be finding ways to incorporate our worship and coming back to fellowship. We do indeed want to worship with you. We do indeed miss seeing you in person, uh, but we do ultimately want to make sure that everybody is safe and everybody is indeed taking care of themselves. And so uh, we all, so we are just taking our steps and taking our time uh, to continue to just make sure that we worship in an environment that ultimately honors and pleases God, but we want to make sure that we are safe in that process. So we are looking to share in a word of prayer in this moment. So I want you to just lift your concerns, if they're concerns, um, that speak to your heart and that uh, you feel comfortable uh, placing them, or posting them, or writing them, or putting them in the memo, uh, please feel free to do that. As New Calvary uh, believers, we would love to lift up uh, and pray uh, for your concerns. We're grateful uh, for your faithfulness and praying for each other and looking out for each other. And we're going to continue to just go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And so right now, uh, as we look and as we thank God, God, we are grateful. We're grateful, God, for all that you do, grateful for the ways in that you've made. Grateful, God, for how you continue just to speak to our hearts and our minds. We're grateful, Lord, for this day, this day that you have blessed us with. We're grateful for all of those who continue 
and share to fellowship and worship with one another. We, God, are praying that you would cover, even in this season, especially in this season, as those who continue to make their way out or those who are returning to work, we're asking, God, that you would cover them with safety, that you would cover them, God, right now, that as they travel and as they interact with people, that you would keep them protected uh, from this virus, God, and that they might not be infected or infect other individuals. We pray, God, for those who we know, who are friends, who are family, who are recovering, who are recouping. We thank God for those who are still struggling. Pray, God, for those who even in this season have lost loved ones, and we continue, God, to pray for them as well. We pray, God, for the family of Brother Floyd Lewis as we celebrated his life this week and ask God that all of those families who are in mourning, God, those families who are going through in this season, that you would just continue to touch them. But God bless the New Calvary family, bless all of those places that are open for worship and who are trying their best to continue to be faithful, to give glory to your name. Show us, God, what you would have us to do, how you would cause us to move, and how you would cause us, God, to operate even in this season. Bless those leaders, God, those who make decisions, those litigators, God, those who uh, come to conclusion about what is best for the country. We pray that they might have a spirit of discretion. Pray that they might have a spirit of wisdom within them, that they might do not what's expedient for economy, but what might be uh, safety and wisdom for the people. Continue, Lord, to watch over us. We pray that in our places of distress, in our places uh, where we are trying our best to make things happen, that you, God, would grant us opportunity to see your blessings move. We pray for every family that may be in financial distress. Pray, God, right now for every household that is in under emotional distress. We pray for all of those, God, for whatever reason, who feel themselves under the pressure and the weight of this season and this world. And we pray and believe, God, that you will continue to protect, continue to deliver, continue to restore, and continue to heal. We give you praise for it all, God, and we bless your name. That we ask that you would continue to keep us and direct us. And in all things, we would give your name the praise. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, and matchless name of Jesus that the people of God who love of God together. Say amen. Say amen and amen. Amen. Grateful for all that is done. Calling your attention uh, to Matthew's gospel. The ninth chapter. Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 16. I just got two uh, verses for you today. Matthew chapter 9 verses 16 and 17. Matthew 9, 16 and 17. Jesus says these words. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. No one sews a patch of unstruck cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. They pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved. We'll talk from this idea today, um, from this thought of everything that's happening. Uh, this is the remix. This is the remix. Uh, you know, one of the things, if we're honest about it, one of the things that is frustrating most people um, is not necessarily um, the virus in it of itself, and it's not necessarily or exclusively the quarantine. What's upsetting a lot of people is the time that the quarantine is hit. Uh, it's about to get warm, it's about to get uh, real summertimey, and 
to be to have to be enclosed is frustrating. Uh, that many of us are going are lamenting the summer and what it means for social gathering. That many people are remembering the long time uh, and a longing and a heart's desire for a time when we had the opportunity to share in the collective. And one of those places that we have been able to share uh, is the beloved family reunion or our cookouts. Now those of you who've been living under a rock all your life and don't know what a family reunion is or know what a cookout may be, uh, may not understand what I'm about to say. But those of you who frequent these events know that they are quite literally a rite of passage in those in the African-American community. You need for a good cookout and family reunion, you need a good ugly colored t-shirt because those are the ones you can get in bulk for the most reasonable price. You need at least five decks of playing cards and four card tables. Don't worry about the other group, they'll play spades or bid whist in the kitchen. You need your favorite aunt's potato salad and somebody who is going to bring ambrosia. And they talk about ambrosia, but it's interesting because it dwindles more and more as you go throughout the day. You need somebody who knows what they're doing on a grill. And it's always better if you have two people working together. But most of all, you need for this gathering a good DJ. Uh, and some music and what I mean by good is it just can't be a one-trick pony this can't be somebody with um, an iPod or some kind of music player with you need to have a literal hit list of songs you have to go through all of the generations in order for everybody to feel connected you need some temptations you need some shy lights you need some teddy pendergrass you need some lakeside you need some ohio players you need some whispers you need patrice russian you need guy you need jodeci you need swv you need drake you need missy elliott you need confunction and we all know that no cookout is complete without Frankie Beverly and May before I let go. Uh, but wait, here it is, here it is. Throughout the course of the day, you're gonna hear all of those songs and you're gonna hear some of the most famous cookout songs ever. Then you're gonna hear the music that is iconically familiar. You're gonna hear that beat by Mays. dun, dun, dun. Da, da, da. And you're going to get excited about that thing. You're going to get excited about that thing. And then all of a sudden, you're going to hear, You make me happy. This you can tell. But it ain't Frankie Beverly singing. It's Beyonce. What kind of heresy is this? Beyonce has taken the sacred song of black Americana and attempted to make it her own. The nerve! For this isn't even normal. What kind of travesty is this? I came by to tell you this morning, this is not a travesty. This is a remix. A remix, in case you didn't know, is a song that has been contorted from its original state but has created something new by adding, removing, or changing pieces to the song. It's an original, it has an original, but the presentation has changed. A remix is a remake of a particular event. A remix is a way of presenting something again in a different way. Now, some people don't like remixes. Some people don't like specific remixes. Some people are particular about their originals. But the reality is, no matter what is put out there, you need to know a remix is already being made. A remix is being made because no matter how original something is, somebody is already remaking it in their mind. The remix is simply an interpretation on what was already done. Sometimes there are good remixes and sometimes they're not so good. But here's the thing, when the remix is done, two things always happen. When the remix is done, two things always happen. The people who know the original can remember and the people who see it differently can create and be introduced to something new. 
Both the old and the new get affected, but they get affected in different ways. And see, why are we here talking about remixes? Because the truth is, my brothers and sisters, the church is in the process of a remix. Now, I know you don't want to hear it. I know some of y'all are getting bit out of shape. I know some of y'all are going, kicking and screaming and don't like this process. But you need to know that what is happening in the world in which we live is going to force the church to declare that this is a remix. A remix that takes the gospel message but processes it in different ways. A remix that takes the old, old story but tells it in a different way. A remix that takes the same book but presents it with a new cover. You will have to work out what it means to do the work of ministry and share this gospel message of Jesus Christ in ways that have never been done before. This means that we're going to need to make room for imagination, make room for creativity, make room for new ideas. We know that the message will stay the same, but we need to know that with bringing the old and the new together, we're going to have to celebrate the remix that's being made. Now, follow me in this text and understand that the rules of the remix means that we'll have to effectively discern our current situation. See, look at the text. Jesus is having conversation with John the Baptist and his disciples about the issues of religious practice. And it appears that the debate is getting serious. If you go into verse 14, this is what it says that John's disciples asked Jesus, how is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Now understand that this conversation is taking place, the scholars believe, at the Feast of Atonement. And that the Jews were required at the feast to at least once a year uh, to fast at this particular feast. And we, what started to happen is that people started to see fasting as a presentation of piety. They started to fast and thought that they were holier and more spiritual when they fasted, that some people started fasting more than the one-time obligation. And see, some Pharisees were fasting, they declare, sometimes as much as three times a week. They thought it was a position of relationship and spiritual superiority. And so the disciples of John the Baptist asked Jesus, they say, we are fasting and the Pharisees are fasting. This is a ritual at the Feast of Atonement. Why haven't your disciples fasted in this moment? And Jesus begins to present his position. That's not, it's not that they don't fast. They just don't fast in the same way at the same time. In fact, they just don't practice fasting, but they practice fasting for the right reason. Jesus is suggesting my disciples don't fast because they're required to, they, but they fast because of who they're in relationship with. I need to say that again. He says, my disciples don't fast because it's a requirement. They fast because they're in relationship with the eternal God. And see, Jesus is suggesting that we aren't here for the fast. The fast is here for us. We don't fast because it's an obligation. We fast because we're trying to get closer to God. So it's not about the fast of making the fast the most important thing. We fast when we need to, not when somebody tells us to. In other words, just because it's a ritual doesn't mean I'm connected to it. I can do it and do something and still have no connection or no feeling at all. So I need to know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it for. I don't fast because it's just that time of year. I fast because I need God to show me some stuff and I need to get my spirit and heart on the right track. I don't pray because it's what I'm told to do. I pray because when I wake up in the morning, I need the Lord to walk with me uh, and thank God for allowing me to see another day. I don't, I need God's help when I make my decisions about which way to go and what to do and how to treat people. I don't tithe because somebody told me it's an obligation, but I give because each and every day God blesses me. And when I look back and see the places where the Lord has looked out for me and provided for me and everything I have is the Lord's. I don't do what I do because somebody tells me to do it. I do what I do because how good God has been to me. And when I stay connected to the power and the love of God, I do it out of relationship and not out of obligation. I wonder if I can get a few of y'all to declare that I do what I do based upon my love for God, not out of my obligation. 
obligation. I'm obligated because I love him. I'm obligated because God is good to me. I'm obligated because when I look back over my life and see the places that the Lord has delivered me, I don't have a choice but to praise God with every opportunity. Jesus tells him, this ain't about obligation. It gets done. It happens. It just doesn't happen the way you think it should happen because we make it happen and do what it do for a whole different reason. Because look what it says in verse 16. This leads us to our text. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, and the patch will pull away and tear and make the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst. Uh, no one sews an unshrunk patch, in other words, a new patch, on an old garment, and no one pours new wine into an old wine skin. Jesus says what's happening now is different. What message is coming now is coming from a different place. You can't place it on an old garment or put it in an old wine skin. Some of y'all are missing it. Jesus says you have to discern how you apply what God is sending you. Uh, some of y'all is missing it. Uh, you got to figure this thing out. No one puts an unshrunk patch on an old garment. I remember when I was talking to my Aunt Will about this very text. My Aunt Will, y'all know, some of y'all know has gone home to be with the Lord. She was an educator in her profession, but her hobby was a seamstress. She would make clothes and dresses as her hobby in her spare time. And I asked her about this text one time. I said, Aunt Will, the text says you can't put new cloth on an old garment. What is the practical ramification? for what they're talking about. My aunt said, well, you can't put a new piece of material on an old garment because a new material has not incorporated with the old fabric. And what will happen is the garment will tear. I said, I understand that. I get that. What uh, I get that what's going to happen. That's what it says in the text. But why would the old garment tear if it's getting a new piece of cloth on it? And watch this. This is what she said. She said, because the reason it's going to tear is because the old peace has already been lived in. Some of y'all are missing it. She said it, uh, the lived in peace has wear on it where the new peace doesn't. Uh, the old garment has already been lived in. It's already been through a process. It's already gone through something. It doesn't have the capacity to hold on and do something in a different kind to be incorporated in certain ways. It's not that the older garment can't be used or the older wineskin can't be helpful. It's just that we have to discern what the best way is to incorporate the new process. We've got to recognize, beloved, that the church, um, we have to incorporate the new. The future requires the new. The next generation requires the new. And it's not about forcing the new on the old of the church, um, but it's about how we discern our incorporation so that everybody is connected and everybody moves in the same direction at the same time. Everybody might not like the remix, but we still have a responsibility to make sure that everybody can get the message. You got to thank God that some things have experience on them. You need to thank God that some people in your life have lived through some stuff. You ought to thank God for the experience that you have and that there's some stuff that's been lived in and tried and tested. You need to thank God that some things have been tried and true and seen the Lord work some stuff out. Can I make this thing live? When I was learning how to drive, my mother would take me to different places. My mother always said she was grateful that she had three boys because when they got of driving age, her sons were going to drive her everywhere. And she made sure that when I started driving, I'd run errands and I'd take her to this place and chauffeur her to this place and that place. And one day, all over New Jersey, and one day I was driving and I was headed towards this exit. She said, take this exit right here and we were going to make this curve and she said don't take this curve faster than 25 miles an hour and the, the sign said 45 and I'm saying in my mind to myself I can take this curve I can do it if it says do it at 45 my mother looked at me and didn't look like I was slowing down she looked at me and said I said 25 and when I slowed down at the curve I noticed that it was a tight hairpin exit it was really sharp and at the end of it was a wall where the curve where the peak of the curve was and I had noticed that there was a whole 
lot of colors of different cars that had scraped that wall as a result of going too fast in that turn. And so when we got out of the turn, I asked her, I said, how did you know that 45 was too fast? My mother said, because I had been this way before. And because I had been this way before, I'm trying to help somebody and help you uh, so to tell you what it is you need to do. And all I'm trying to tell you, beloved, is you need to never sleep on good experience. Don't ever sleep on somebody who got good experience. Don't sleep on somebody who's been through something or who's lived in something or who's lived through something and understand what the Lord can do and understand how God can continue to answer. That there's good news and good experience and we can trust and thank God that the Lord continues to lead us despite where we've been. That we need to understand that the rules of the remix mean that you're going to have to use some discretion in your situation. But here's the second thing real fast. The rules of the remix mean we're going to have to make sure that we don't destroy our surroundings. Here it is. Jesus says, I know what you're doing. Don't uh, just do something because it's new. Uh, you don't know how it's going to affect what you already have. Because what you already have uh, has, has a share of experience. What you've already seen has a share of experience. And you don't want to destroy that and throw that away. But here's the, another reason why you got to make sure that the remix is right. Uh, you got to remix it right because if you don't, you can destroy what you already have. I'm in the text for the patch. He says, we'll pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. He says, neither do men pour wine into old wine skins, for if they do, the skins will burst, and the wine will run out, and the wine skin will be ruined. Don't miss this. If the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wine skin will be ruined. You have to be careful about your remix because you could destroy what you already have. John Maxwell in his book, 15 Immutable Laws of Growth, says that growth can't happen unless your surroundings are conducive for growth. Jesus is ultimately saying the same thing. He says, if you put new wine in old wine skin, the skin is going to burst and you're going to ruin the skin and lose the wine. Can I help some of y'all? Jesus is talking about the process of fermenting. Fermenting is the process in which metabolic changes happen with the organic change of enzyme. Watch this. Enzymes change. Uh, the chemical uh, balance of enzymes makes a change. What happens, in short, is that the enzymes are going to change. Enzymes, when they get together, watch this. New enzymes, when they get together, they get excited. <sighs> you missed it. New enzymes, when they get together, new enzymes get excited. And when they get excited, they start to expand. And when they start to expand, they produce a gas that can't be contained. Now watch this. New wine does this. Old wine has already gone through this process. So new wine, here it is, needs to change in order for it to grow. New wine needs room to expand. It needs room for the enzymes to get excited so in order for stuff to grow. And if there's no place for the new wine to happen is wherever it's housed will break. So you can't put new wine in an old wine skin because when the new wine begins to change and get excited, there'll be no room for it to go anywhere because the old wine skin has already stretched itself out and it's going to burst. And not only will the wine skin be damaged, but the wine will be wasted. So nothing good comes out of the process. Here it is. You got to be careful. When new enzymes come to the church, because what will happen is if they get contained too much and they get excited and want to grow, you'll do more damage than you do in helping. So when the enzymes get excited and they want to do stuff, but you put them in an old wine skin, what's going to happen is your enzymes is going to destroy and ultimately leave out. Uh, so watch this. Things that need room for change. When there's no room, damage will occur. When the system doesn't make room for change, damage begins to happen to the system. 
When a system doesn't make the adjustments for change of racial relationship and tries to hold on to old models of oppression and discrimination, damage is going to happen. When a system wants to hold on to old ideas of power and control instead of expanding the idea of what a country should look at with different ethnic groups and different minorities, damage is going to take place. When a country doesn't want to expand but limit the opportunity of other people, then you vote for a president who calls Mexicans criminals and you rally at the courthouse of the state of Michigan and rally in Charlottesville where racists can gather and the president says that they're good people. When you don't want to expand the ideas of community, but you want to continue to stereotype minorities, then you can have people like Gregory and Travis McMichael track down Ahmaud Arbery and shoot him in the street because somebody said he looked like a suspect. When you can have people like George Zimmerman kill a Trayvon Martin because he was walking through a neighborhood, you can have police kill a Tamar Wright for having a toy pistol. You can have police shoot a Philando Castile for reaching for his wallet. You can have a police officer choke Eric Gardner because he was selling Lucy's on a street corner. When you don't want to expand your idea of what equality looks like, you can say women shouldn't preach or pastor. Or when you don't want to expand your idea of what decency looks like, you will vilify everybody who don't think like you think or believe what you believe. When you don't want to make room for others' needs, you pro protest the discretion and safety of others, and you shout about the fact that you can't get massages or haircuts or tattoos or being able to sit in a restaurant, even when the virus is spreading in larger numbers in some places. When you don't want to make room for change, and you don't want to create an opportunity to expand sooner or later, you're going to get an explosion and it's going to do some damage. Jesus said, don't put new wine in a place where it can't grow. Because here's the thing, it's going to change. Uh, like I said, the remix is already happening. Uh, whenever there's new wine, you can expect some expansion. Whenever there's some new enzymes, you can expect some excitement. And the old framework can't handle the pressure. You don't have to be stuck with just one framework. You don't have to be so rigid that you can't see other ways to present this new wine. Now more than ever, we got to make room for ideas. We got to make room for solutions. We got to make room for creativity. We got to make room for different ways to do ministry. Got to find ways to share this book with a new couple. But here's the thing, we as believers have to open ourselves up because the reality is we're gonna be the issue. God was never the problem. God has been making room and new ideas and new possibilities each and every day. God has always opened up possibility. God has been showing us new ways in our lives every moment. The song says morning by morning, new mercies I see. God has shown us that expansion is possible. The change is available. We just need to make sure that we're willing to stretch ourselves. So I'm glad that I have a God that doesn't box me in. I'm glad that I've got a God that doesn't limit the possibilities in which I can talk about the goodness and, and God's mercy. I'm grateful that I have a God that doesn't close me in to the closed-mindedness of other people who don't want to stretch, who don't want to believe, who don't want to trust, who don't see God operating in different places. I'm grateful that when I thought God couldn't do it, God did. And I just believe that some of y'all testimony here, you can try to be as rigid and closed in as you want to, but everybody's got a testimony that God showed up in a way that I never thought God would. And if God showed up in a way that you never thought God would, God is not able to be boxed in or closed in. God's got possibilities that can lead you to different understanding of what is possible with the Lord on your side. To recognize these remixes require some discretion, but the re these remixes require that we don't destroy what we already have. And here's the final thing. Listen, the rules of the remix mean that we have to decide to create new solutions. See, Jesus says you got to make room for your expansion. New ideas get excited and they start to grow. That's what they do. And if you put them in an environment where they can't grow, they're going to do damage. 
Watch this. The new wine is lost and the old wine skin gets ruined. Don't miss the meaning Jesus is given. Those in the, those in the old will be damaged trying to keep the new contained and the new will be lost. Right now, church is struggling to get the attention of the new. We're looking for new people, looking for fresh faces, and but we're losing them. And the reason we're losing them is because some of the old can't or won't make room for them, but they're only doing damage to themselves. That's why the remix is important. Because the remix helps the old to remember and the new to get introduced in a new way. Now understand, when I'm talking about old, I ain't talking about people. People can age, but they don't have to act like they can't expand. Limiting yourself to expansion is a choice, not an age requirement. So I'm not talking about age, I'm talking about your spirit. I'm talking about the spirit and being willing to open and being willing to transform. When Jesus is talking about new and old, many things he's talking about Jewish law and new covenant in Jesus Christ. But Jesus doesn't want either of them to be destroyed. He wants both of them to exist. That's what he says in the text. Look at it. He says, no, they pour new wine into new wine skins and both are preserved. Jesus ain't trying to destroy what is old or experienced. He's trying to expand the idea of what the old has been trying to do. That's why the remix is so important. That's where, well, that's the part that makes me shout. Because Jesus is saying, it's not that I'm trying to erase. I'm trying to elevate. I'm not trying to erase. I'm trying to elevate this thing. I'm not trying to erase it. What the old is, I'm trying to elevate the cause. Here it is. The cause was never to preserve the old. The cause was to get people to be in relationship with God. So if that means you get it with the old, fine. But if you get it with the remix, that's fine as well. Don't frown on the way you get it. What you need to do is thank God that you're able to receive it and let God lead you and protect you. The goal was always a better relationship with God. And if the old gets you there, that's cool. But you also got to appreciate somebody if they get the message in the remix. And as the church, we need to take this opportunity to recognize that the new wine that's coming our way. How are we going to share it in such a way that we continue to grow and we continue to give God glory and expand so that God can be appreciated in new ways. And that the liberating message can be received that we have to recognize that we aren't in the same place that we were before. See, here it is. Uh, I remember some time ago, I think it was middle school, I think my son was about to start middle school and it was the new year, the new school year. <clears throat> and Malcolm came to his mother and he said, he said, I don't want to wear, you know, mother pulled out some clothes, she had bought him some new stuff and she also pulled out some stuff that he had from the previous year. And he said, he, put, he held up the pants to his mother, he said, Ma, I don't want to wear these for the new school year. And you know, it immediately became and turned into something. And uh, his mother said, these pants, ain't nothing wrong with these pants. These pants is good. You're going to wear these pants this year, boy. You, you ain't going to get everything new. You're going to wear some of the stuff that you got. And he said, Mom, I can't wear these pants. He said, I can't wear them. And she went into, well, you know, you can't be worried about what other people say. You can't be getting caught in that stuff. Everybody ain't going to have new stuff. He said, Mom. I can't wear these pants for a half hour. That's all he said. He said, Mom, you're not understanding me. I can't. He protested. They went back and forth. I, I, like a good father, I knew how to stay out of that. I wasn't going to get in the middle of that thing. And I stayed out of that thing. He said, he said you don't want to wear them. She said, you don't want to wear them. And then they finally got to the point of the matter. She said, you don't want to wear them because you had them last year. And you wore them in last year's school. And then he frowned his face up. He said, no, that ain't it at all. He said, I don't want to wear them because they don't fit the same. He said, I don't want to wear them because they don't fit the same. I can't wear them. I can't do it. I can't do the same because they don't, they fit me from where I was. Some of y'all missing my teaching. He said, they fit me from where I was. I need some stuff that can fit me to where I am right now. Some of y'all are missing this thing. You can't stay in the same place that you did the last time because you've already grown. There's some stretching that God has done with you. There's some growth that you've experienced. There's some places that you've been. God has delivered you from some stuff and so when you put on the old stuff it don't fit the same you need to understand God has stretched
stretched you in some places. And because God has stretched you in some places, you can't shrink yourself and go back to the places you were. You need to put on some new possibility. You need to put on some new clothes. You need to put on some new opportunity. You need to put on some new hope. You need to put on some new energy. You need to put on some new love and move in the direction that God is continuing to take care and deliver you from your situation. Whatever it is, God said, I can stretch you because I'm giving room for you. No matter what you face it, I'm telling you, I've already stretched you and you're growing and God's got possibility in his name. And I just believe that there's some people sitting in your house right now worshiping, thanking God that I ain't been where I was. I'm not where I used to be. I thank you that you stretched me. I'm grateful that I've grown. I'm grateful that the old mess don't fit me the same way. I'm grateful that the old drama don't fit me the same way. I'm grateful that messy people don't fit me the same way because I've been stretched to grow and be different in this thing. Can't do with the old wine skin because I got some new wine that God is using. So thank God for the remix that we might have the wisdom, we might have the understanding to see that God isn't finished with us yet, but God continues to stretch us. We just need to notice those places where we're growing. We're grateful for worshiping with, for you worshiping with us today. Grateful for this opportunity to share with you. Grateful for the time in which you've allowed us to share and simply express it. And to those of you from the New Calvary family, we want to make sure that you understand we're going to continue to reach out and continue to stay connected to all of our fa fa friends of New Calvary Baptist Church. We thank you for worshiping. Thank you for sharing. Let somebody know if this has blessed you. Tell somebody to tune in next time as we continue to just grow and see what God has in store for us. Listen, we miss you. And as my buddy says, Reverend Dr. Eugene Gibson, we love you and you can't do anything about it. We're grateful for this time to worship. We'll see you soon. Let us look to the Lord. God, we love you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your grace that continues to follow us. And in all things as we depart and as we say farewell, keep us, Lord God, until we see each other again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord place his peace upon you for this now and forevermore. In the wonderful, marvelous, and matchless name of our Father, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Together, the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Be good. Take care. Peace, 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 peace.